সুপ্রে দর্শক শ্রোতা আমন্ত্রণ জানাচ্ছি আমাদের এবারের পরিবেশনায় এখন উপভোগ করুন সপ্তম জাতীয় ইংরেজি বিতর্ক প্রতিযোগিতা পরিকল্পনা ও নির্দেশনা হাসান আহমেদ চৌধুরী কিরণ প্রযোজনা মঞ্জুরুর রহমান Dear viewers, a warm welcome to the first round of today's 7th National Television English Parliamentary Debate Competition. Ladies and gentlemen, the format of the Parliamentary Debate Competition differs from the traditional style. In this system, there is a government party and an opposition party. The motion is placed in the House by the Prime Minister, who is also the leader of the House. The role of the opposition is always to place constructive arguments against the bill. Today's motion before the House is, only economic sustainability can eliminate gender inequality. Mastermind Dhaka is representing the government side, and Bangladesh International Tutorial Dhaka is representing the opposition bench. The government side is being represented by Nazmus Sadat of Mastermind Dhaka, who is the Prime Minister and Leader of the House. Saminur Majumdar is the member of the cabinet and is in charge of Ministry of Women's Affairs. And Kashpi Wahid is a member of the Treasury bench. The opposition bench is being represented by Faiza Rahman of Bangladesh International Tutorial Dhaka, who is the leader of the opposition. Farah Nasreen Choudhury is the deputy leader of the opposition. And Nabil bin Murtaza is a member of the opposition party. The honorable adjudicators of this session are Dr. Silverine De Silva Srikanthan, Head of English Department, University of Information Technology and Sciences, Shabnam Sylvia Khan, Senior Teacher, Vikaranisa Noon School and College, Dhaka, Subhash Das Gupta, Assistant Representative, FAO, Shamim Hamid, United Nations Coordination Specialist, and Seba Tasneem Haq, Senior Teacher and Moderator, Sunnydale School Debating Society, Dhaka. The Honorable Speaker of the House is Professor Dr. Arifa Rahman, Chairperson, Department of English and Dean, Faculty of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, East West University, Dhaka. Before the House starts its proceedings, let me inform you about the order and time allocation of each debater. Prime Minister, four minutes. Leader of the Opposition, five minutes. Member of the Cabinet, five minutes. Deputy Leader of the Opposition, five minutes. Treasury Bench Member, five minutes. And Opposition Member, five minutes. The Opposition Leader will get another three minutes for rebuttal, and the Prime Minister will get the last four minutes to wind up his party's stand. All the members of the competing teams, the adjudicators, the invited guests, and other members of the audience will comprise the members of the House. And I most humbly request the Honorable Speaker to start today's proceedings. Honorable Speaker. I call the House to order. The motion before the House today is, only economic sustainability can eliminate gender inequality. I would first request the Honorable Prime Minister and Leader of the House to present the motion. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor and a very good day to everyone present in the House today. Honorable Speaker, motion today is that only economic sustainability can eliminate gender inequality. I, being the Prime Minister in the House, is proposing this particular motion in the House. Let's go straight to the definition first, ma'am. Mm. Only, by only, we mean the fundamental solution. Economic sustainability is a term. Let's dissect it. By economic, we have to know what economics is firstly. Economics is the study of the distribution, consumption, and production of wealth in human society. Sustainability is a state or of being able to provide that is enough to live and to survive, eliminate, eradicate, exterminate, and etc., etc. Gender inequality. Now, this 
particular term, gender inequality, is a very vague type of term used in the house today. By gender inequality, we mean gender discrimination. What is gender discrimination? Gender discrimination, before going to that, what do we mean by gender? Now, gender is a word that is not to be confused with the word sex. Sex is the biological demarcation between male and female. Gender is an indicating factor socially, culturally, politically between men and women, girls and boys, male and female in general. This is the point where the problem has taken place. This is where today still we are having a lot of loopholes that we are not being able to mend. Question is, honorable speaker, what is this problem? According to Marxist philosophy, whatever that is economic, any factor that is economic, is the basic structure of a society. Coming to the superstructure, which is built upon that basic structure, are education, culture, religion, and different other aspects of our day-to-day -day lives. Basic structure has been the first economic activity, according to us, the government here, is agriculture. First steps towards an economic civilization. This civilization today has seen, at the beginning of it, matriarchy taking over, ruling supreme. Then came the Dark Ages, feudalism, and gradually these principles went behind doors. And in front came up the concept of religion and culture and society in general. In some societies, we find women and men equally participating in, de in decision making. In some soci uh, societies, we find men subordinating women to them, which is the case of our society today. And there are other societies within the perimeter of this country, some tribal areas, where women are the dominant figure still. Question is, where does the economics, the factors of economics, come up and help us to eliminate this inequality, and why only? It is not a solution that we're trying to forge in the house. This is something that we're trying to suggest, we're trying to prescribe to the nation in this house. Because there is a word can in the whole motion today. This can is a hypothetical word which says that it, these are the prescribed measures that you can take in order to eliminate this particular problem. Economic factors coming down to this point, Mr. Speaker, ma'am, sorry. Honorable Minister of Women Affairs would be going down the ground and giving you some detailed explanation of what do we mean by economic sustainability and the solutions coming up. Honorable uh, Treasury Member would be summarizing the House's proposition today. Firstly, going to the economics sector, economic sectors, Honorable uh, Speaker. We find economics to be a type of element, no matter what the environment is, no matter what the environment is, no matter what the area is, take it to be Sahara Desert or take it to be our society. It understands the elements of the society and it settles down and it operates gradually. What we are saying is the opening up of investments. We are talking about opening up of the existing industries to come forward and place your money on the fact that you are going to economically invest in the economic system of the society where the market forces will take place. As a result, uh, demand for labor would be increasing because there would be a question of productivity, which means division of labor. When division of labor is created, you will be able to, you know, you will be forced to employ people. Then comes the question of the circular flow of money due to the economic uh, development that we're going to sustain. Economic growth would be promoting circular flow of money, and this circular flow of money would be, 10 seconds, ma'am. Circular flow of money will help us get a greater amount of revenue, and that is how we would like to eliminate this particular problem. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. And now, I will uh, call upon the Honorable Leader of the Opposition to take the floor. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. My respected judges, dear government, and everyone present in the House today, a very good day to you all. The motion set forward today states that only economic sustainability can eliminate gender inequality. Now, let me draw your attention, ma'am, to the first two key words of the motion, economic sustainability. When can economic sustainability be achieved? We can achieve economic sustainability if we have economic growth. This economic growth will take the economy to an optimum level. If this optimum level can be sustained, this leads us to economic sustainability. Let me point out, however, that economic sustainability must have a trickle-down effect. This economic sustainability must reach down to the poorest of the poor of the society. 
and it must augment their standard of living and it must sustain it. Now, gender inequality, let me take the definition which was put forth by Omar Toshen. Gender inequality is not a homogeneous, it is not a homogeneous aspect. What it is, is it is a collection of disparate and interlinked ma? problems. Yes. Uh, my question is to the leader of the opposition. Are you trying to redefine what we have defined as gender inequality? My uh, answer oh, is oh, oh, overruled uh, because she was just going to give Amut Shen's definition of gender inequality. Now, let me take you back to economic development. Economic development, it has its financial issues, it has its trade, and of course it has its social and its cultural side. Now, let us look at a more universal view of what the world says about the steps which will lead us to ideal economic development. With this, I present you with the Millennium Development Goals, the MDGs which were put forward by the United Nations and agreed upon by 191 countries presents us with the eight goals, which they say that when achieved will lead to ideal economic development. Now the first goal states that we have to eradicate extreme poverty and hunger. Secondly, we have to achieve universal primary education. Thirdly, one of the top three of the MDGs states that we have to promote gender equality and empower women. Now the MDGs, they go, they go on and they talk about health and they mention the environment. However, going back to the topic, now I can clearly say that it is universally agreed that to achieve economic, to achieve gender equality is one of the main aspects that we have to fulfill in order to achieve ideal economic development, which in turn will lead to ideal economic sustainability. However, can't I achieve, can't a country achieve economic development, ignoring the fact that gender inequality exists in the country? Yes, it can. Point of if information? I okay. Point of information, well? Yes. Do you have any alternative to economic sustainability that would lead to gender inequality? Yes, any I do. I wish that you would wait. This is what we're debating about and my deputy leader and my member of parliament will be presenting you with the factors other than economic sustainability that can eliminate gender inequality. Going back to what I was saying, a country can achieve economic development regardless of the fact that it has gender inequality in its country. Even though gender inequality persists in a country, the country can move on with its economic development. This economic development can lead the country to an optimum level. This optimum level can be sustained. And this will lead you to economic sustainability. However, is this economic sustainability eliminating gender inequality in the country? No, it is not. This economic sustainability has been achieved ignoring the gender inequality that persists in the country. Let me give you a practical example of this. The United Kingdom which I'm sure my dear government will agree with me when I say is economically sustainable. Does gender inequality not exist in the United Kingdom? Let me present you with specific data which states it does. In the United Kingdom, women earn merely 60% of what the man earns. Women hold merely 14%, I repeat, 14% of the parliament seats. Women account for only 23% of the women in administrative positions. Is that? gender equality? Is that the gender equality you're talking about? Has the economic sustainability in the United Kingdom eliminated the persisting gender inequality? No, it has not. Talking about flipping the coin, you know what we can do? We can also achieve gender equality by ignoring the fact, by um, regardless of economic sustainability. Even if a country is not economically sustainable, we can eliminate the gender inequality. This can be done, obviously, ma'am. 15 more seconds, please. This can be done, obviously, by implementing certain initiatives. But most importantly, what we have to do is we have to stop this mindset. We have to shatter this mindset of the male-dominated society. If we are able to shatter the mindset of the male-dominated society, we can achieve gender equality regardless of the fact of whether my country is economically sustainable or not. I ask you, dear government, will you still say 
that economic sustainability is the only factor to yeah. eliminating gender inequality? I think we should stop now. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you, um, Leader of the Opposition. And now I would call upon our Honorable Cabinet member to speak before the House. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor and a very good day to everyone present in this parliament. First of all, I would like to po uh, point out some of the quotations that you have made. made. You have said that women earn 60% of what men do in the United Kingdom. Now, if they, if they are earning 60% of what, they, what the men do, then we are seeing there is uh, gender inequality. Now, here they are, not, they are not economically sustainable. Now, if they had been economically sustainable, they would earn 100% of what men do. If they earn 100% of what men do, then that's economical being economically sustainable. Now, if they are economically sustainable, then there is no inequality. You yourself has say, have said that they earn 60% of what men do. We are telling that they will earn 100% equivalent to men. Now, when they earn 100% equivalent to men, they should be economically sustainable. And that's when the gender inequality be totally, totally be eliminated. Now, coming to my points, we off and on have observed that although women render and put in many commendable services to the society, to their family life, to their national life, yet they are not given uh, the proper and due appreciation and due respect. Despite having the uh, qualifications and qualities like a man and sometimes more than a man, they are deprived of that appre certain appreciation. Now the question arises, why? Now, they are deprived of that appreciation because... Yes. You said that women will be on, the, on equal grounds with men, then we will achieve economic sustainability. But doesn't your motion say that economic sustainability will eliminate gender equality? That's you are suggesting that gender equality will lead to economic sustainability. That is not... If to what men do, then it, they will be economically sustainable. So it means that if their income is what is equivalent to men, that is if they are economically sustainable, then only gender inequality can be eliminated. If, if I say A, A and B, you are telling B and A, now there, it, it has no meaning. Because I'm telling one thing, you are just... Uh, okay, you may continue with your views. Now, I was there because there, a question is arising, why aren't they given the proper appreciation? They aren't given the proper appreciation of the only, only and only reason that they cannot earn money for their family. They don't get that recognition because they don't make the economic contribution in the society, they don't make the economic contribution to their family, they don't make the economic contribution to their national life, at least no direct economic contribution. Now should they make an economic contribution that is by earning money, by contributing to the family expenses, then they will be getting that proper and due appreciation which they deserve. Now, we will see, like, take the average family, the family of rickshaw puller. Now, he comes home at night, his wife does all the work, rearing his children and stuff. He comes home at night and he scolds his wife to, by seeing the uh, worn out ch uh, roof and his miserable conditions. Now, that is the basic situation of our country in each and every average family. Now, if the, women, the woman, the woman of the house contributes to, to his expenses of the family, if she is economically sustainable herself, if she herself works with, uh, in correspondence with the man, then the man cannot blame the woman that, yes, you are not doing that. Because we are telling that she should have some economic contribution to the family. If she has that economic contribution, she will be economically stable. And if she is economically stable, then there will not be any gender inequality. Now, coming to the fact about education, the leader of the opposition had say, have said that uh, we have to build, uh, educate the women as well, uh, as good as a man. Now to educate them, my country itself must be economically sustainable because I have to do all the groundwork, I have to build schools, I have to take, recruit teachers, I have to create more employment. Now if I have to build those schools, I have to start from ground level. To start from ground level, I need economic sustainability. Now, in, in order to uproot... Okay. Um, are you trying to say that women in the economy do not contribute to the economy? Because women do boost exports, they work in the industries, they work in defense, they, they, they fight during the second world war. You yourself that there are only 14% of them being in the parliament. Yes, but they do. They so can we are telling they should be 50-50. Okay, they okay. Uh, point economy. taken and uh, you can may continue. Yeah. Now, what we have figured out a few solutions to this problem, the government as being the uh, minister of the cabinet, I am a... Uh, uh, 
proposing some of the solutions in this bill that we should include in the constitution to increase women's quota in the field of employment where more women would be employed in each and every government sector and also non-government sectors. In that way we will see that more of the women are contributing to their economic, economic, economic growth of the country and that's when we will see that there is elimination of gender inequality. The second point that I have, uh, the second solutions that we are suggesting is that we will undertake special training in women entrepreneurship and also microcredit facilities. We have seen that microcredit facilities enabling to women was a huge success since it had earned a Nobel Peace Prize. We will be promoting that in each and every sec each and every districts of the country so that women can 39 percent of what the uh, of the women are being forced by their husbands and sons to take the microcredit they're saddled with the credit risk while the, while the husbands and sons are using the money elsewhere in the economy oh, and she's not being able to do anything if they are family. using elsewhere in the economy how do they pay the high rates of interest they cannot it's a husband who's using it they, we have seen such we have of seen of that thank you uh, good point committee. and uh, you've 39, given your answer uh, yes we've taken your point he's given his answer you may continue now the third solution which we we suggest it's a very innovative solution that we will introduce a mobile women's court in the last five years we saw that there was a mobile food court in the country which was a huge success similarly we'll have a mobile women's court which will uh, carry out 30 seconds one minute one minute, one minute, sir. One minute. we will carry out instantaneous tribunal against women harassment where the women will be getting their proper uh, judgment for what is wrong what wrong is done to them now if the mobile food court can be a huge success we believe mobile women's court can be also a huge success and to do that we, my country needs economic sustainability because we need money for that we need financial help for that we need more recruit we need to more employ employment for that and we need to pay the salaries to those being employed so in order to achieve that we need economic success right, and sustain that success that is sustain the economic solvency that we'll be getting the fifth the fourth solution which i'm suggesting is reducing the income taxes and corporate taxes paid by women now in that case more women will be coming into the field of the trading system and they will be contributing more in the trading system as a result they'll be earning more and they will not be uh, experiences experiencing that inequality which they face in their 30 seconds okay. now to finish I'll finish my speech but with the last solution that is we'll carry out projects to teach children from elementary level to, in order uh, to give them knowledge about women's rights and how uh, the women's violations the rights violations so that they in the future become good citizens and they do not commit any crime regarding women's violation women's rights violation so in order to have that in order to have execute this full scheme and to accomplish that my country needs economic sustainability and in order to achieve economic sustainability my country should carry out these pro uh, carry out these solutions and then only we'll see that there will not be any gender inequality existing okay. in the borders of Bangladesh. Your time is up thank you next I'd request the honorable deputy leader of the opposition to present the views of their party to um, the floor. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. Respected judges, my dear government, and everyone present in the House today, a good day to you all. I, being the Deputy Leader of the Opposition, would once again like to highlight the topic of today's motion, that only economic sustainability can eliminate gender inequality. Okay, me being a, a member of the Opposition, I strongly stand opposed to this motion. I would once again like to redraw your attention back to the MDGs, the Millennium Development Goals. The Millennium Development Goals consist, uh, have eight goals in it, and uh, amongst the eight goals, the most important one is Goal 3, that is promote gender equality and empower women. Okay, goal, why do we say this is the most important goal? The United Nations has said that this is the one goal which, is, which can help achieve all the, re the rest of the seven goals, and in turn help the MDGs become a success. And the MDG, the United Nations terms, to make a country economically sustainable, ideally economically sustainable. Okay, Goal 3 has been given such importance that a set of initiatives called the QIIs, the Quick Impact Initiatives, has been set up. The Quick Impact Initiatives say that we must strengthen opportunities for post-primary education for girls, we must reduce violence against women in the sense that there must, be, there must not be a, any e-teasing in the country. Women must be able to have a social and personal security when they're moving around. We must increase share of female seats in the political bodies and eliminate gender inequality in employment. Yes. 
Well, um, you're talking about the basic things like education and everything. Number one, how would you do it without economic sustainability in a country? And number two, are you agreeing with us, ma'am? Because that is exactly what our second speaker has said. No, we're saying that over here, first of all, we need gender, e gender equality in order to promote education. If there is no gender equality, there no amount of money can give you the education, can it? Point of information, ma'am? Yes. Would you please highlight the link between equality between a man and a woman and that leading to proper education of children in our country would you please oh, yes, I will. Okay. I will uh, can i please, please, please uh, request uh, i have that in my speech courtesy and politeness uh, by all the members of the floor okay as i was saying i would like to bring goal three promotion of gender equality and empowering a woman into greater limelight healthcare education and poverty are all interrelated and goal three is one of the goals which can help uh, these, these three factors are necessary for a country to look at while, while trying to develop their economy. Why is that? Because go, uh, empowering, women, uh, empowering women and bringing about gender equality will uh, help all these three factors in a country come, come into place. Okay, healthcare and education are both interrelated. When we say if the children in a society are not healthy, they, they are not fit enough to attend school, how, then how is the literacy rate increasing? It's probably going to decline. But as it is seen, out of the 115 million children who do not go to school, 62% of them are girls. Why is that? Because Point the male in the society. Yes. Why don't they go to school? Because they are not economically sustainable. Because they're ill. They're and the why they are ill? Because they cannot them. buy the good food. They can't can, cannot buy the good medicine that they require. No, and no, they cannot do that because they are not economically I, I sustainable. Have not done with Ms. <coughs> Please let me proceed. Okay, as I was saying. Healthcare and education are interrelated, and with that uh, good healthcare, st students cannot go to school. Uh, st boys and girls cannot go to school. Why is this? Because the parents seemingly pay more priority to the boys, and since they do this, this is why the rate of girls not going to school is in due to due to lower healthcare standards is is higher than what the boys' uh, percentage is. Also, if there is not uh, uh, in equality in education in the country, they will not have proper health, uh, knowledge about healthcare. If the females are not educated, then they will not have proper knowledge about family uh, planning, our birth care. They will not be able to take care of the environment, and also pandemic diseases like AIDS will keep spreading. Okay, now let me give you a few amazing statistics. Only 61.4% of the women in the country are illiterate. And out of the 960 million people who are illiterate adults, a shocking two-thirds are females. Why is this? Okay, a mere 30% of the decision-making posts in the world are held by women. Only a mere 30%. And out of the 1.3 billion people who live in poverty in this world, 70% of them are females. Why? These are not facts and figures we, we should be ignoring while trying to develop a country. Oil trade. Female are paid much less than what men earn. And what happens? The cost of production of firms decline. And as a result, the price, the dom a price of domestic goods falls. What happens? What uh, people watching from the sideline would say that export is booming. What would you, my dear government, say that the economy is sustainable because trade of a country is booming? You, the, w w but what the inside story actually is that the country seems to be economically developed and sustainable at the cost of women being deprived of the rights they so deserve. Is this something we should be ignoring while developing a country? Lastly, 60 to 30 million of the uh, females in this world are, 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 um, do not exist in this world anymore. Why? Because they had to go through selective abortion, they had been neglected, they had, they had to suffer ill health and also over, uh, overwork with lower paid wages. Ma the uh, Minister for Women's Affairs, I am sure you were not uh, aware of this. If you were, then you would not be passing the bill today. Also, females in a society are being so horribly neglected and degraded that no amount of economic sustainability in any country has been able to do anything to, uh, to, um, uh, uh, to uh, eradicate this issue as of yet. Dear government, I leave you to ponder upon this situation data upon which the uh, member of my party will sum up later. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, judges, and my dear government. Thank you. <coughs> and uh, now, I would like to call upon the Honorable Member of the Treasury Bench to take the floor. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor and a very good day to all of you present here in this house today. We accept that women are being neglected and we accept that women are being held inferior to men in our society. This is the evil of our society and we, the government, stand here today to eradicate it. How do we eradicate it? Through economic sustainability. We do not say it is the only economic sustainability. We say it's the only fundamental solution, which means that this is the trunk of the, tr this is the, trunk of the tree and based upon that, there are a lot of branches. 
and all of these branches have been mentioned by our second speaker. Honorable speaker, in a family, there is a father and there is a mother. Why is the father the one who takes all the decisions? Why is the father who, who, who decides what the children will do, who decides when the children will go to school, who decides when the daughter will be married off, who decides that he wants to see his daughter settled before he dies, and so he marries her off? Why? Because... Point of order. Yes. Ma'am, you said that you did not say that only economic sustainability will eliminate gender inequality. I'm sorry, but you said that. But your motion states only economic sustainability can eliminate gender inequality. You just contradicted yourself. Ma'am, if you were listening to our definition, our definition clearly stated only means the only fundamental solution, as in like the only trunk of the tree. And upon that, there are many branches. So it, it just shows you weren't listening. But yes, as we were going. Basically, the father is the one who's the only earning member in the family. And what does that lead to? That just leads to the fact that he comes home and he tells his wife that it was one hard day. The country is, is doing very badly. I have a lot of children. And you know what? Please do not disturb me right now. Please do not bother me. We do not want men to have that right over women. We agree with you. Men should not have that right over women. And that is why we have put forth these solutions that we agree upon that yes, we need to eradicate this evil, and how, we, how do we do that? When the man and the woman, they're earning the same amount, they're spending the same amount, they have the equal amount of right over the family, and they have the equal amount of right in the decision making. Let me start with the microcredit um, strategy. Uh, it was a 96% successful strategy, may I add, according to Dr. Yunus's annual report of Grameen Bank. Now, how can I say, why was it 96% successful? Because uh, like they started off by giving some loans to the men. 50% of the men did not repay the loan. When they paid the same amount to the women, 96% of the women, they repaid the loan on time with interest. What does that show us? Our women are just waiting to be helped. And how do we do that? We do that by helping them, by, by enhancing their security, by producing them with, with productivity enhancing trainings. And in order to carry out all these strategies, we need economic sustainability in a country. After all, without economic sustainability, who will give them loans? And who, I ask you, who will create the infrastructure standing on which these women will stand on the same ground as men in a country? Honorable Speaker? Yes. You're talking of microcredit. I will accept that it is a positive thing. It is something positive. But, but, the woman, does she get to use the loan? She gets the loan, but 39% of the women do not get to use the loan. It is the man who gets to use it. The Grameen phone you may talk of, men are the ones who are using it. Sir, and even sir, the what loan are you will talking be repaid about? by the man, and you get the loans, but you do not look deep into it. Sir, in case you didn't know, Grameen Bank has a strategy where after each and every loan is issued, they have people who go and check on what the women are doing. They give them guidance, they check on what they're doing, and they have, they prepare, they produce them with two five-year plans. And in those five years, when the women do return the loans, they make sure that they bought lands with it, they, they, they nurture poultry, they do agriculture, they make sure of all these things. Okay, I'm point sorry, taken. I'm Please continue. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Point, point of information. information. Yes. Yes, you're talking about microcredit. Where is it based in Bangladesh? Is Bangladesh economically sustainable? Are all the people of Bangladesh above the poverty line? Isn't economic sustainability supposed to bring 100% of the population above the poverty line? So you're just proving that we do not need economic sustainability to implement microcredit. Thank you. Ma'am, we never said we need gender in 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 equality to lead to economic sustainability. What we're trying to say here is that microcredit was the first initiative that Bangladesh took and we were rewarded immensely by that, by the, no, by the Nobel Peace Prize. And what does that say about ourselves? In spite of being number two, number three and five in the most corrupted nations list, we still got a Nobel Peace Prize. Why? Because we took the first and the foremost 
initiative to eradicate poverty and moreover to eradicate poverty amongst women, uh, amongst poor women. What did that lead to? That lead to uh, uh, eradication of inequality amongst women in the poor, amongst the poor people. Let me give you an example. Eric Shapuller, he's illiterate, as you say, we agree. His wife, she works at households. When he comes home, he beats her up, severely beats her up, takes away her money, and leaves her with two children to feed. She goes to, she goes to another house the next day, she works, she comes back home, the same old story. What do we want here? We want the freedom of that woman. How do we give that woman freedom? We are suggesting mobile women's court, which means all violence against women, all violations of women's rights will be eradicated, by which every woman will go home at night and sleep, and, and she will spend her money according to her will, but in, in, to her family, to, for the betterment of her family, and in order to, do, and by that, she will be on the same ground as her husband. But how do we implement the mobile court through economic sustainability? And what will the mobile court give the woman? It will give the woman economic sustainability. What will economic sustainability give the woman? It will give the woman the voice to tell her husband that, you know what? I earn too, I have rights too, this is my life too, this is my house too, this is my money as well, so I will not listen to you. When she has a voice, she has a stand. When she has a stand, she stands with the man. When she stands with the man, we have equality in society. And how do we have equality in society, ma'am? We have it only through economic sustainability, both of the nation, of the individual, and of each and every citizen of our country. Because it is only through money, through economic, through economic um, imposing of wealth. of wealth that she will be able to, sustain, to be, attain that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Member of the Opposition, I call upon you to speak on the motion. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. Respected judges, my dear government, and everyone present in the house today, a very good day to you all. Now, it is of prime importance, of prime importance for us to return to the motion set by my dear, dear government today. Only economic sustainability, I repeat, only economic sustainability will lead to gender equality or eliminate gender inequality. Now, let me dr highlight this fact that, my dear government, you are saying that gender equality has to be achieved. Yes, but you are saying that gender equality is the thing which you achieve and then it will bring economic sustainability. But your motion states that only economic sustainability will lead to gender equality. Let me give you an example of an economically sustainable country. Japan, which is so economically sustainable successful, so economically sustainable, so fast in technological field, it's so hard to catch. And yet, the situation of gender inequality in Japan is of such great extent. Japan is economically sustainable, order, but ma it did not achieve economic... Okay. Honorable spe uh, the speaker is holding a pen. He's not supposed to do it in the parliament. Uh, is that... Yes, ma'am, it's, it's a basic logic, ma'am. Well, anyway, that's not ma a great continue, problem. Please. You can put down your pen, we can take it, but I don't think that's a great problem. Thank you, ma'am. She's not holding a dagger, at least. Thank you, ma'am. Now, let us look at a more historic, historical background, dear government. Germany in the 1930s had achieved unimaginable economic sustainability, but was there gender equality in the, go in the country? No. The when form of government was that of... Third. That's the last one, yes. Was Germany <laughs> aiming for gender inequality, sir? Coming to you, yes, so okay. They would use the I tool? accept it, okay, I accept it. Germany was economically sustainable, but the form of government was that of dictatorship. The form of government deprived women. So, did it achieve the economic sustainability, but did it have the implementation to achieve gender equality. No, it did not. Germany was a form of di dictatorship. It, didn't, it wanted to contradict the women. It, it kept the women at home. They were producing babies and receiving medals for it. So did the economic sustainability of Germany give gender equality? No. I would repeat that the mindset of the people has to be changed by implementation of laws. And 
let, let us look at the flip side of it, which I highlight, my dear government has been alluding to, I do not know consciously or unconsciously. They are repeatedly talking of achieving gender equality. Now let me talk of it. Can gender equality be achieved regardless of economic sustainability? I am talking of a developing country which is undergoing development. It is not economically sustainable. But can I achieve gender equality? Yes, I'll prove so. You implement the laws, the laws are there. It is the mindset of the people that has to be changed. You have to utilize your media. You have to pass laws and acts. You will not need money to talk to your people, I hope. And then you achieve equality, gender equality. And the participation of women, who mostly comprise 50% of the population, will, will be able to play a part in your economy. And that will lead to economic development. And that will lead to economic sustainability. Ma'am, is it the last minute? One minute. Now, I would like to highlight that my dear government is repeatedly, repeatedly talking of gender equality to be achieved. We have said, according to the Millennium Development Goals, as put down by my deputy leader, aims at economic development. The Millennium Development Goals aim at economic development, and one of the major aspects of Millennium Development Goal is to achieve gender equality. The ideal economic sustainability which they are trying to achieve will be got by means of gender equality. It will be gender equality which will give you economic sustainability and not the other way around. Now, uh, I, uh, I would summarize this constructive, uh, uh, constructive part of this round by requesting you, Honorable Speaker, that this bill should not be passed because economic sustainability is not the only factor which will lead to gender equality. It is not the only factor. There are other factors, primarily the mindset which has to be changed. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you all. Thank you, uh, Member of the Opposition. And uh, now uh, we come to the rebuttal round. And uh, first I would request the Honorable Leader of the Opposition to speak for three minutes. Thank you, ma'am. Dear government, what you've been saying, I'm sorry, the motion, the bill that you're trying to pass today states that only economic sustainability can eliminate gender inequality. Now, if I say A leads to B, it is not the same as saying B leads to A. What you are suggesting is that fine, we will implement certain initiatives and then we will achieve economic sustainability. It is not the same as saying that I will achieve economic sustainability and then I will eradicate gender inequality. What you are suggesting and what we have been trying to make you understand is that gender equality in a country will lead to ideal economic sustainability. What you are trying to say is that economic sustainability will eliminate gender inequality but, but you are giving us reasons which suggests that it's the other way around and that is exactly what we are trying to tell you. Yes, please. So, why when two of the greatest economically sustainable countries in the world, Japan and the United Kingdom, when they can claim themselves to be economically sustainable, why are women still raped? Why are they still not given their rights? Why in these countries? Why are these countries still having to deal with gender inequality? Why do you not understand that only, let me stress on the word, only economic sustainability can eliminate gender inequality? And you yourself have said that wealth is a major portion of economic sustainability. So when I have wealth, that's it. My gender inequality is gone. I can do everything with my wealth. I can convince a man to respect his wife by money or do I talk to him and do I reason to him I and I make him understand that no, this is wrong. I do not need wealth to change the mindset of the male dominated society which can, which can achieve gender equality. Thank you. And finally, the Honorable Prime Minister and Leader of the House gets four minutes to wind up his party stand. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving the floor again for the rebuttal round. First of all, I'd like to start with rectifying some of the loopholes made by the opposition here today. Primarily, Honorable Speaker, we have been given prescriptions of substitutes that are Millennium Development Goal, Mindset Change, Talking to the People. Where are the schemes? Where are the rock-solid schemes that we need in order to ensure that it is not the only method through which we can eliminate gender discrimination or gender inequality to be more precise? Question is, 
economic sustainability, the term itself is so huge that a parliament session like this is not possible to define it the way it should be defined. Question is that we are saying generally that it is applicable for any society if you have wealth, you have investment. You have investment, you have potential firms entering different industries. When you have that, and I've said, as I've said earlier in my speech, you have the question of answering the question of productivity. Division of labor, labor demand increases. Women will be work, working when there will be a point when the people would be banking on the fact that yes, the forces of demand and supply are more, much more important than anything else, any other political issue. Question is, the consumers, which is the mass, they will not be considering the fact that the services and the goods that they are getting, whether it is made by a man or a woman, that won't be the problem. On the other hand, when we have the reward for these particular services provided by these people, we find the, con the efficiency-oriented rewarding. Coming to the point where we are standing here today is that wealth distribution of it. Firstly, we'll be giving you the risk-bearing capability, which means the microcredit success. That yes, I'm going to start up a business, I'm going to do something of my own, and only then can I ensure that yes, I will be going out there and I'll be opening, opening a poultry farm or a dairy farm to be more precise. This is the majority. Agricultural sector is the major uh, part of the society here today. We are going to subsidize that. If we want to subsidize that, we would be needing money ourselves. Where do you ask for the money? From the foreign donors? Not necessarily. When we have the circular flow of uh, money as we speak, we will, we will be having taxation there. And as my honorable second speaker have said that there will be equivalent taxation for women as well as men in order to you know, eliminate gender inequality, which means a greater amount of revenue would be there, which we can use for the subsidies to subsidize these particular in industries if they're facing any sort of problems. This is what we are trying to say, that economics is something that will operate itself. All you need to do is sit there and observe that something doesn't go wrong. And that is it. Women need to be economically solvent, economically capable of saying that yes, they have a say. 10 seconds, ma'am. Economics is something without which none can be rich, without wi and with which few will be poor. That's it. Thank you. Today's motion proposed by the government was only economic sustainability can eliminate gender inequality. We have just witnessed a very stormy debate in the House, um, both and very strong uh, points and arguments were made both by the government and by the opposition party. Uh, I would like to give a few, just a few comments before we come to the end of this uh, notion of this debate. Uh, I'd like to uh, look at the, the motion that we have in front of us. There are two main issues here. One is economic sustainability and the other is gender inequality. Uh, both these issues we understand very well. The government seemed to have gone to a great deal of length to make us explain what is economic development and what is sustainability. And uh, the gender inequality also is something that seemed to have been accepted both by the government and by the, um, the opposition uh, party. The, thank you. The fact remains that uh, the point of contention was how do you go about uh, eliminating this gender inequality. We have three other words here which are key words in this motion. One is only, the next one is can and the other, uh, well, only and can. And of course eliminate we understand there's no problem with that. Now can, the English word can has two meanings. One is the ability, like for example if I say I can play tennis or I can swim, that's my ability. And if I say, well, I'm going shopping, I, I can go to Newmarket or I can go to um, uh, Eastern Plaza, that's that possibility sense. And if I understood correctly, the government was actually trying to push the second meaning of possibly this is the way we can go, uh, sustainability, economic sustainability, uh, possibly may eliminate gender inequality. The problem was with the word only. If you have only X can do Y, that can becomes really ability. You know, only gender sustainable, uh, only economic sustainability can eliminate gender inequality, and 
the opposition was actually pushing that uh, meaning of uh, can, that it's only if you have this, then you can do that. So both of you, you were actually, you know, arguing along your own ways of defining the, uh, the motion and uh, made very good points. The fact remains that gender inequality is an extremely crucial problem, not only in Bangladesh. Bangladesh probably has a much a more severe problem, but all over the world. And we've had examples of even the economically developed world like the uh, United Kingdom and Japan where, uh, where there's so much of economic affluence but still a lot of inequality among genders. And uh, the gender inequality obviously as uh, some of the participants have brought up with the Millennium um, Goals development goals where gender inequality has been emphasized as a very strong factor for the next millennium. And gender equality, of course, does include other issues, not only just economic, uh, sustainability or economic affluence, but also some people have talked about mindsets, culture, culture uh, education, a uh, whole lot of interrelated factors and aspects are uh, should be has to be considered before we can really and truly have a gender equal um, society and obviously that's one of the greatest uh, problems and one of the greatest um, work that we have to work towards uh, with that I'd like to come to today's the end of today's uh, debate I have the results here and I am rather sad to say that it has been a very, very strong, well, I'm happy to say it's been a very, very close race, a very strong, you know, both sides were absolutely very good and very strong, and the, the difference was so, so little that it's very sad to even announce a winner. The difference was only 0.70. Nevertheless, we do have to have a winner, and today's winner is the government party. Master. That's the mastermind. With that, we come to the end of today's process.